So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. You know, on a Monday night, I know there's probably some things that you would probably rather be doing than listening to me, but um, I always appreciate when everyone shows up. And is, is there anyone here for the first time, never been to a Hit Run Candlesticks Right Way Options e-learning class? Speak up, just type a Y you're new here. Welcome. Hey, Bob. Seeing any newbies in here? Well, if you are new and just too shy to say so, welcome. Um, do appreciate it. Yadish. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Well, tonight, um, this was a little bit my apologies, a little bit thrown together. I wasn't expecting to do an e-learning tonight, but um, John was going to be doing an e-learning tonight, but we were worried whether or not um, he would have his power back down there in Florida. So we switched it up, and so you, you got to deal with me tonight. But I thought I would talk a little bit about <clears throat> my favorite chart patterns, but more importantly, why do I like them? Why do, why do these patterns do it for me. What What is it about them that makes the difference? So let's dig in. If you guys have any questions, always feel free to ask. I do this every single day. So you're more than welcome to ask anything here tonight, and I'll do my best to try and explain and understand um, so everyone understands. And we will... Um, go through some of these first basics. Now, I just went to this black screen here on my ThinkSwim platform. This is actually a paper trade platform just to explain this. So what I wanted to do when I was looking for chart patterns, chart things, one of the things I wanted was I wanted patterns that were repetitive. And one of the most repetitive patterns is the market. We all learned about it initially is the peak and valley pattern. So we know the peak and valley pattern repeats itself in the market over and over and over and over. And where is the best place to find good peak and valley patterns that give you good odds of winning or continuation, I should say, continuation. That would be in uptrends and downtrends where the stock is moving in that downtrending pattern. They're the most common patterns in the market. They are the easiest to find and they repeat themselves over and over and over. So that's where I started from. I, I wanted just simple trends following simple patterns and something that I could repeat over and over and over in the market. The other thing, is I needed them to be easy to find. Okay. Um, it's pretty simple to find trending charts. Pretty darn simple to find these peak and valley patterns in trades. And so if I were to draw out a peak and valley, uh, just a real simple peak and valley pattern in here, we can look right in here. We know this is the most opportune time to be a buyer. Now we never know exactly when that's going to be. However, if we utilize trend and if we utilize price support in a chart, where these come together, you will have the one of the highest win-loss ratios that I've ever found in the market. Now, it requires trend. It requires price support. If it's something that's really stretched away from trend, for example, a price action has moved like this and then suddenly moved up sharply, pulls back a little bit, starts going up, these fail actually at a pretty high rate if the trend is here. 
They fail at a pretty high rate. Not, it all depends on the momentum in the market, but you're going to be closer to a 50-50 win-loss ratio in a chart like this that's away from trend. They may not necessarily fail, but they pop up here and then they just have to rest or consolidate out to the trend. Okay, so I, were, I was looking for those patterns that traded in um, with high probability in trades, meaning that I was not interested. How many in here are interested in a trading strategy that wins half the time? I mean, we all know if we win half of our trades, if we're 50-50 in our win-loss, we can make this work as long as our trade management is good enough. But it's not easy, right? It's pretty difficult. You've got to be very, very disciplined on this. Yeah, you can flip coins. Exactly right. And win part of the time. All right. And, and I'll tell you honestly, guys, I do a lot of individual coaching. And this right in here, when I ask people what their win-loss ratio is, the vast majority of people tell me this. They win about half their trades and they lose half of their trades. And the reason that is, in my opinion, is because they're not taking trades that improve their odds of winning. Okay, They're taking trades because they want to be busy. They're taking trades because they want to trade. But they're not taking trades that actually have better odds of winning. So those are the basic criteria that I look for in those charts. And then I start looking for trades um, that are potentially or charts that are setting up those potential patterns. So take an example here of CPNG. We can see that this move down it trended down, it moved down in a peak and valley pattern. It crossed up and tried to hold, but just didn't do a very good job in there. Couldn't find a good solid trend to hold against. Flipped away. When it started moving up again, move up, we pull back. There's our valley looking for an entry in here. We rally up and we break through a resistance here in the chart resistance so now price becomes support and look at how tight this consolidation is becoming in here so this is what I call a pop out of the box pattern the pop out of the box pattern if you measure it from the top of the range to the bottom of the range of that price action I want and they come in all different sizes and shapes but I want that pattern to be at least four days long okay and the reason it's four days is because there's other chart patterns out there called mat hold that are just a three day pattern. That's already in the books, but I want at least four days in that tight consolidation. And I want 3% or less from where the entry into that trade would be and where the stop loss would be. The trade. I want that price action to occur as near to trend as possible and as near to support as possible. Okay, and the reason that is, again, I said the why. Why do I want trades like that? First off, these have a higher than average winning ratio. Okay, you're entering the upper 60s to even nearing 70% win ratios in trades that are near trend and near support. As long as we're in a bullish trend and as long as the market itself is in a bullish move. Okay, we need to have those things working together here in these charts. And then I'm looking for those entries that give me a low risk. How many in here get tired of you know, these trades that are pretty high risk, you put on more risk than you want that. In fact, in the whippy kind of market that we that we have been in here lately, how many of you would say that the winners, 
the, the numbers on your winners are having trouble overcoming the losers. And that's, that's pretty typical in trading patterns that are having in that 50-50 range of a trade. So in here, you can see I would be watching this for a trade, but I'm really not going to be too excited about it until it's here. That's when I really start getting excited about those patterns and those opportunities to pick up. And I want trades that give me low risk entry points. I want to be able to control the risk of every trade, put the odds in my favor of winning and keep the risk of losing low. You know, I listened to some interviews once about professional gamblers, pro professional card players, and one of the questions that was asked of them by an interviewer was, how in the world do you make money consistently as a gambler? And he said, you remove the gambling from it. As much as possible, you remove the gambling from the gambling. The meaning of that is know the odds. Know when the odds are in your favor and when they're not. You in for me in trading, I choose not to do anything on um, charts that the odds are not in my favor. Okay. Um, good question, Kev. When you look at this price pattern here, you can see we had one wick that went above this pattern. But I place my alert right here because you can literally see where the sellers are. So sometimes all the wicks line up. Okay. Sometimes all the tails line up. Sometimes it's the bodies. It all depends on what pattern that you're looking at. Okay. Do I reconfirm with volume? Not typically. I want the direction of the market to be bullish, meaning, you know, I do the morning market prep video every day. And the purpose of the morning market prep video is for me to look at the circumstances and the things in the market to make sure that I am comfortably bullish to the upside. And then I want to be looking for those bullish trades or if I'm comfortably bearish to the downside and I want to be shorting. Or if the market is just in that uncertain place and I probably ought to pull back and not trade so much or at all because I'm reducing my odds of winning in an uncertain market. Okay. And do I take um, trades on smaller time frames? Yeah, no. Now, now that's not to say that you can't trade a shorter time frame to do it, but don't don't enter a shorter time frame and try to manage a daily chart. Okay, you're going to get too many contradictions. Okay, and it, it's going to make you nuts anyway. First off, most people can't do it successfully, or even come close to doing it successfully because there's too many contradictions. So. You know, um, type of Y yet, yet ish. If you've tried to do that and find out that great trades, you missed out on completely because you tried to time with the short term chart or shorter term chart and then you just missed it completely, right? There's a saying that, and in fact, I just used it today in, in my class, it comes out of a, 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 an old. Um, Clint Eastwood movie, a la Josie Wells, um, a dance with the one that brought you. If it's the daily pattern that brings you to the trade, trade the daily chart. If you're trading an intraday chart, trade the intraday chart. Okay? Don't mix the two because you're going to end up with lots of contradictions in price. So when you're looking for these trades, we want low risk entries. We want risks that we can also see this in the pop out of the box. 
this is one of my very favorite patterns. The pop out of the box is my pattern. Um, I, I've not patented it or anything like that, but it's my pattern. And you can see right here, you can see exactly where the buyers are, correct? So think about it. If I were to buy this trade, if this fa fails underneath here, do I still want that trade? No, the sellers are taken over, right? They're pushing this back down, okay? And that can be pretty common right in this area away from the trend. So you can try to predict and get into this trade early. And that's another one of the rules that you have to learn to be disciplined to is stop predicting. Literally set a price alert and make the trade come to you. Okay. So we want to be looking for that trade as this continues to consolidate somewhere out in here someplace. We see that chart finally gain that energy and it pops. And this trade will have a high probability of winning when that occurs. And a low risk entry point. And you got to also remember that it doesn't matter how long the consolidation is here in the pop out of the box, as long as it comes into the trend. Okay, that we continue to hold support. If this breaks support, draw this. If this breaks this support, has to come back and test trend and pops back up and holds in here, we can still look for that entry into the trade. If it pops on day seven, do I walk away? If, I, if it goes past day seven, no. Here, take a look at McDonald's. Today, if you walked away from day seven, you missed the trade. Okay. There's that nice little tight consolidation in here. We can certainly see where the sellers were. And except for a couple of baubles underneath this area, we could see where those buyers were. So we did push down, push back, prove to hold, and then pop. When it breaks the alert. When we see that the sellers are giving up and the buyers are taking over through that area here. That's where I want to enter. I want to enter close to trend, close to support. And I literally, these pink lines that you see on my chart, these aren't accidents. I set alerts like that all the time. And I literally make the trade come to me. No predicting close to support, close to trend. If it isn't in a trend, then there's no trade for me. If there's no definable trend that I can find, I just walk away. Okay, walk away from the position. So take a look at like the CPNG here again that chance that this could be coming into a potential trade. So you set this here as a price alert. This and note right here, there's my alert. It notifies me if price pops here. If it pops ahead of trend, and that happens, if it pops ahead of trend, I have to make the, dec the decision. Do I want to take this ahead of trend? If I do, I have to plan enough time because it's often, it often occurs that we will pop 
and then we will just rest back to trend before it takes off. Okay, so I have to plan enough time for that to occur. In case it has to do more resting or consolidating in the chart. Take a look at Pinterest. There's the pattern, and there's support, and this was the beginning of the upside trend. We had this little trend in here on this impulse wave up, right in here. But I've had this alert up here set for a while. Everybody in the trading room knows it. Everybody sees my alerts every day. And I make the trade come to me. Okay. And notice that these patterns are not that hard to find. Low risk entry trades, stop losses underneath this area. And I'm looking for that move to the upside. Notice right in here in Pinterest, if this can continue, there's a price resistance right in here on that gap down. But if it pushes through there, we could come up into here to fill that gap pretty easily. A nice upside move. Okay. So it's making that trade do what you want it to do where you want it to do it no guessing and no predicting no anticipating the entry make it come to you okay now the reason i'm being so harsh on on that guys is is i want you guys to know that i have maintained a win-loss ratio of more than 70 percent for the last 21 years, except one year, I was just slightly below a 70% win-loss ratio. Because I'm picky about the trades. I'm here to trade to make money. I'm not here to trade just to trade. I'm not here to trade because I'm bored. I'm not here to trade to guess. I'm not here to predict. I'm here to trade trades that give me high probabilities of winning. And that's why I like these patterns. Why well, they're my favorite patterns and why I am willing to wait. I don't need every trade in the market. And I don't necessarily have to trade every day or all the time. Okay? I need the right trades. Okay? And I'm only here to take trades that give me better than average probability of winning. Okay, now let me make this really clear. Although I've been able to maintain that win-loss ratio, doesn't mean I know what's gonna happen next. I've, I've traded these patterns tens of thousands of times, but I'm like anyone else. I don't know what comes next. I can be surprised. Right? Things go wrong all the time. News happens. Something happens, and that's why my win-loss ratio, about 30% losers. But see, you can make a lot of money in the market if you focus in on trades that have high probability winning ratios. And I'm not saying that mine are the only ones that do that. There's probably other patterns out there that would do as well with a good study of them and a bunch of history study on them that would do well. It's just, I'll be really honest with you guys, I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to work too hard at this. I want simple patterns that repeat themselves over and over. I don't want to have to do any fancy gyrations. I don't want to have to have gobs and gobs of scans that do all kinds of little things. Actually, Misha, um, taking a loss should be one of the easiest things that happen. Okay. And the reason I say that is because you plan the trade. You know where the stop is, right? If this were to fail underneath here, if Pinterest reversed in here and broke below there, I no longer want that trade, right? It, 
it's it's messed up. The decision should be made before you enter the trade where your exit is. It should be an easy out. Take the loss when it's a small loss, not when it's a big loss. Don't argue with the market. If the pattern fails, get out of it. Um, we have my, I, I think you probably know, I think you've been here, that I use scans. I use simple scans. There's actually a pop out of the box scan in the LTA scanner. You guys have never seen the LTA scanner. It runs automatically and all you got to do is turn it on. Okay. All you got to do is turn it on. Um, but I, I use that and I use scans that we call the three, eight trap. And this is a three, eight trap trade. This is setting up a three, eight trap trade. This is a three, eight trap trade after one right here. Again, guys, support and trend. High probability winning trades. They repeat themselves over and over in the market. This moved up, it's consolidating here, and you can see this entire line up here is an alert. The resistance level there. I'm waiting to see in here if that's going to have the energy to pop and continue to follow the trend to the upside. I don't have to predict it. I don't have to guess. I have to wait and be patient for the market to show me it wants to go that way. Now, there are times, guys, and it, and it happens, you know, all the time. It's, it's not like it's daily or anything, but it happens. Sometimes this will occur, and this will go like this and gap up and run. And I'll miss those. And that's okay. I don't care. Because if I chase that gap up, my risk to my stop loss just got bigger. Right? That's not the trade I wanted. I wanted the low risk entry trade. I don't want to chase something and increase my risk on the trade. So this is going to happen from time to time. Just let them go. Stop chasing. How many of you have gotten really beaten up here lately when a market, well, in this last six weeks, where the market would pop up and you'd get a stock that popped up and you'd chase into the trade, and then the next day it was pulled back and stopped you out? And vice versa to the short side. It did the same thing. Because we were churning our indexes in a narrow range. And if you get involved in that chasing, your win-loss ratio goes down. Okay. So don't chase the moves. Uh, Trader X, nice, yeah. The RI looks like another pat pattern that could be setting up in that chart. There's your daily, nice little tight consolidation following along its trend. Where's support? Works right in here, right? So it's not too far from support. We can see where the seller or the buyers are. So anything below that area we want to be stopped out of, right? So now we set an alert up here and we wait. We wait to see if this is going to complete this pattern and pop. 
Okay, here's an example, guys, of buying away from the trend right here. I showed you when we shoot up like that really sharply, it pulls back, it pops up. It's fine if you want to take that trade as long as you plan enough time. And notice what it did. It came back to trend before it moved up. If you were willing to hold that, you have a winning trade. If you micromanage this, you're stopped out on a loss. Okay. That makes sense. So the reason I like this, these trades is because I don't have to predict anything. I don't have to do anything really fancy. What I'm really working to do is follow the market. Okay. Of all the money in the market, over 80% is controlled by the institutions. Okay. The institutions control 80% of the money in the market. Besides that, the one percenters in the world, the really wealthy, own about 50% of all the stocks traded. Okay, the mega bucks. It takes about 50, the rest of the retail traders, about 50% own 1% of the tire and stock market. So when we think as retail traders that we can move the market, that we can predict the market, we're only fooling ourselves. The markets will move the way the institutions and the big investors want the market to move. Okay, If they're not behind the stock, if they're not in there pushing it, the stock cannot move because it takes so much money to move them Retail traders can't do that. All we can do is find the trends and follow them. And you know, the thing is, it's so much easier to do that. You can improve your odds of winning by giving up all the predicting, all the guessing, all the hand wringing, all the fancy stuff, and just follow the trend. And I'm living proof of that because I live way better than I deserve from trading. And not because I'm fancy and not because I'm super smart or because I'm any kind of, you know, gee whiz genius guy in the market. I'm not, I'm just like everybody else. I've just learned the discipline to let the market show me where it wants to go and then I follow it. Easier to do. So take a look at this APLD. Here's an example of a trade that didn't work. And I'm not in the trade. Okay, so when a trade is setting up for a position and it fails, I didn't predict anything, so I'm not in the trade. I've got no money loss. I could care less what happens with this now. The only way this could get back into my good graces is get back up here, hold, show me that higher low, and then resume the upside trend. And only then. Okay. There's another really good example in this chart of what is a bad habit that a lot of people use and do over and over and over again. How many of you have seen the big white candle here? You get so inspired by the big white candle, you jump in, you chase it. Oh my gosh, I'm missing out. And then somewhere over in here, you get yourself stopped out of the trade. And isn't it unfortunate some of these people will get stopped out just before we figure out where the trend is and the trade becomes a winning trade. Because we're not patient enough to wait for the entry. Okay. 
McDonald's here today. Look how long you had to wait. And, you know, I don't care how long I have to wait, as long as it holds within its pattern. And you notice it came back to trend. It shot up here, was away from trend. There's plenty of bullish candles in here to get you to jump. And it still made its way back over here to trend. So if you get caught in one of these candles here, you have to make sure and plan enough time. Stop loss goes underneath there. Notice in this, if you did got caught in this trade, if your stop loss was underneath there, you made money on this trade as long as you held it. If you micromanaged this, you, you went out at a loss. Near trend, near support. Write those things down, guys. Near trend, near support. Now, the other pattern that I like as, just about as much as the pop out of the box is the pullback opportunity. The stock is moving up in its trend. It's up pulls back and it just comes back to the trend. It's just resting back into here. And then those buyers step in, stop losses here. And you follow that chart up, the pullback opportunity. I showed you guys that peak and valley pattern for a reason. Okay. And I drew out the most opportune times on the peak and valley pattern rear entries here. So a simple rule to follow. Always buy stocks at or near price support and trend with a buy signal. No anticipation, no predicting. When we have these little candles here that just rest in here on trend, all you got to do is set a price alert, guys. Set a price alert and make that trade come to you. and proves your win-loss opportunity. Because if this fails, you don't predict it, if this fails and drops here, if this were to fail instead of move up, you're not in the trade, right? You don't have to worry about being in that trade because that trade didn't perform as it was supposed to. You're not in it. No worries. Make the trade do what you expect it to do. Make it come to you. If it doesn't do what you expect, step away. Meaning if it gaps all the way up here, walk away. If it fails to hold trend, walk away. If it fails to hold support, walk away. We're talking about improving the odds of winning trades. We have to have discipline and we have to focus in on patterns that give us that opportunity to increase those odds. We do technical analysis for the purpose of increasing our odds, and yet oftentimes we throw that away because we get caught up in emotion of a big candle. We just want to be in this stock. We try to anticipate or predict the entry. Fear of missing out jumps into those trades, and we just, oh, wait, got to hurry up, got to hurry up. And you drive your win-loss ratio lower when you do that. Okay? It keeps you active, right? But how many of you would, would agree you can be super active, and if your win-loss ratio is 50-50, okay, you're just spinning your wheels. You'd be better off trading less and finding higher probability trades and waiting for those because we don't need that many winning trades to have a great week, a great month. 
in the market if we're disciplined for those entries. But when we get involved, and oh my gosh, I got to hurry, I got to rush, I got to move quick into trades, you're going to end up driving that win loss ratio lower, having more losses in your trade. And by the way, I trade this ex these exact two patterns in futures. This is my futures chart. The exact same patterns on a very fast intraday trade. It works exactly the same. So far this year, I'm on pace. I'll do about $130,000 doing the exact same thing here on an intraday chart. It's the exact same thing if you trade a longer term chart. It's the exact same thing if I switch this to a five minute chart. The patterns are the same. Five minute chart, it found the trend right there. There's the trade. Every time. The same, but we have to be willing to wait for it. Okay, entry into McDonald's is right where my when it pops the alert, get your entry. The pink line grace is the alert here. So we popped here, but we couldn't follow through on any of these. Couldn't move up. We were stale. We were stagnant. Today it popped and kept moving. Get in the trade. The sooner you get into the trade, the less risk you have to your stock. Yes, that's why you don't chase a gap. Grace, you don't chase a gap. You heard me say that a couple, three times. If it gaps, step away. Not your trade. Because anytime it does and you chase that move, you increase the risk to your stop. Every time you guys, this is a simple way to do it, guys, is figure out how much can you risk on a trade. Let's say you have a risk tolerance of $200 for every trade. You can risk $200. You can stop out $200. It's not going to hurt you on every trade. Okay. If that's your number, when you look for your entry into the trade and you calculate to where your stop loss is, if it's more than $200, if it's greater than 200, this is not your trade step off. Don't take it. Guys, it's such an easy calculation. Where's my entry? Where's the stop? How much risk is there? And yet I hear people whine all the time. All the time. I don't have time for that jazz. That's BS. Because I've done it forever and a day. You don't have time not to do it and not understand how much risk there is in a trade before you make that jump. Okay. It takes no time to figure it out. It would take no time in here to look at this chart and say, well, if my entry is here and my stops here, before this trade even pops off, I know how much risk I'm going to have to take step off. It's not my trade. Find another chart. Okay. This isn't rocket science. It's actually really simple when you think about it. If you take trades that put you off balance, you're always taking trades that there's too much risk in it. You will never be comfortable with the trade and you'll micromanage it. You'll stop yourself out. Show of hands, how many of you stopped yourself out on a trade that you knee-jerk reaction jumped into? How many of you stopped yourself out just before the chart was a winner? 
We've all done it, right? We've all done it. So how do you stop that? Stop micromanaging your trades. Okay. Know how much you can risk on a trade. Never take a trade that's more the more risk than you want to take. And make the trade do what you expect it to do. Don't predict it. Don't do any of that stuff. Make it do what you expect it to do. And if it doesn't, who cares? Step off. Your money's not in it. There's no ego in this. There's no golden watch at the end of this. There's no, there's nothing. It's only whether your account grows or it doesn't. There's no hero stuff in trading. Nobody's going to care at the end of your career. Did your account grow or did it not? That's all that matters. Okay. That's all that matters. Yanish, I would like to say that every trade had a specific time that you're going to be in the trade. But we all know that that's not true, right? There's just too much volatility in the market. Sometimes you're in trades for two or three days. Sometimes you're in trades for a week. You know, on swing trades, you just, you never know. You might get in and it moves really big in one day and you say, hey, that's enough. And I take the profits and walk away. Right? There's no, the market's too random. There's no way to put a set date or time that you're going to be in, in a trade. It's based on the price action of the chart. And we cannot see the future. Uh, Grace, that's for sure. When we're in choppy market conditions, you're going to see that more often. When we're in a nice trend, and we just we just got into this nice trend. Look at the diamonds here. The diamonds was going sideways here for nearly a month. Okay, and then we resumed the trend again. Chart near support near trend okay so when the market is doing this you're going to get lots of popping and popping and failures now we're in the upside trend that make sense? And, you know, when you talk about do the calculations, I mean, I, I mean, seriously, um, <laughs> CPNG, okay, let's place a line up here that tells us what the price is. The price is 2598. Where do you want your stop loss to be? If our stop loss is at 2519, calculate the difference between the two. That's your stop. That's how much risk you have to take. If it's one share, 100 shares, or if it's a option, what's your delta? If your delta is 70 and you drop a dollar, you, you lose $70, right? On a single contract trade. This isn't rocket science. It's pretty simple stuff. Addition, subtraction, pretty simple stuff. Okay, if you don't want to do the math, 
build a calculator. Okay, I used to do this for years. And everyone in Rightway Options has the members of Rightway Options can access this and then make it whatever they want. And this was just a simple calculator that did the exact same thing. I use a little bit different terminology this day, these days. What was the closing price? What was the support price? That's the stop. Underneath that is the stop. What's the resistance price? That's the potential profit target. Calculate between the closing price and your support price, and that tells you how much you have at risk. You can make a calculator to do that. Plug in the numbers and do it. I did this for years. When I couldn't watch the market at all during the day, I was gone before the market opened. I didn't get home until well after the market closed. I actually calculated my trades, placed them in the market before, the, before I went to bed the night before. And because I was following the market, not predicting the market, I grew my account. Okay, don't make this too hard. It's not that hard. We oftentimes as technical traders take everything and we make it way too hard. It doesn't have to be that hard. Okay, take a look at CLF. This is a chart coming up out of the bottom. There's the trend. We've slipped past the trend. There was a possible buy in here. Any of those days you could have bought in there. Still be holding as long as you held your stop, you're good. You could pick up a trade right in here, still be holding. You're good. Take a look at CCJ. There's that trade that went ahead of the trend and that one worked. That one worked. Notice right here, right here, what's happening in that chart. Don't need every trade, we just need the right trades. We find trades that are at or near price support and trend. Okay, dash. Guys, I can't make this stuff up. Right there. Gilead. This one hasn't produced much. Popped up in here, went a little bit early, and then like I said, be willing to wait because it may have to rest back to trend. Okay. These charts are everywhere. Right now, Roku. Just can't get going here still. But look right out here. We don't know where the trend's actually going to really take off. We've popped and now we're resting some more. Could this be the next trend? Wait for it. Okay. Look along this trend. Pop. Best back to trend. These patterns repeat themselves over and over and over in the market. Okay, you see a big break like this? Don't chase it. Wait for that to rest to come back to trend and look for your entry into the trade. The last opportunity was right down in here, right? There it is. You can see it. And I don't care what chart you trade. Okay, this chart hasn't really given an opportunity for entry in the, except to chase. And here's the risk of chasing. Chase that up, we find a resistance point and it comes right back down. 
So what do we need to get in that trade? We need that resting pattern. There's our trend. So don't get involved in the chase. Wait. Yeah, you're going to miss out on some of this excitement, but you might miss out on the great big loss. Look for the trade near trend and support. You don't need that many. Okay. PayPal. Alert. Up here. Chase it. Wait. Very good chance this rests here for a period of time. Against that resistance, it comes back to trend. Okay. And you're going to find these charts everywhere. On the short side of things, you're going to see exactly the same thing. Okay. So when a stock is moving in a downtrend, stock downtrends it'll be the same just following the downtrend lower just wait for the trades to occur to come to you okay so i want to reiterate on a couple rules here first off can you guys see this requires a little bit of discipline it's not emotional trading at all yeah ccj is looking great okay ccj looks good Walmart. Slipped its trend, right? So we don't know where the trend is. There's an equal chance Walmart could pop through here, hold a higher low, and then you find your trade right there. If you try to predict it here, it could pop and hit that resistance, reverse, and start going down. The wait. Be patient. Right there. Wait. Be patient. So it requires some patience. It requires you to stop predicting. It requires you to be watchful and patient for trades. Okay. Wow. That's, that's awesome, Trader X. Be patient and wait for trades. Be patient and wait for those really good-looking entries. There shouldn't be a whole lot of question. I'm seeing this Walmart trade, is there a whole lot of question of where the entry is and where the stop loss should be? There's, there shouldn't be a major question. You don't have to do that hard thinking, well, maybe I'll go intraday and try to find a spot in here. Maybe I'll, you know, and do all this twisting. I'll, no, the price action says where the sellers are, where the buyers are. You wait for them. And when they occur, take your entry. You're going to lose on some of them. Set a stop loss, follow the stop loss. If it stops you out, you're out. Okay, no playing games with that. No second guessing. It's not personal. Okay. Raising your stops is kind of a personal thing, you know, um, for the trade. Um, I usually want to see. You know, if I were trying to raise a stop tightly, I want to see follow through. So, for example, like this trade pops up here. That stop loss stays here until this actually follows through to the upside. Then you can move your stop. If it continues to follow through, then you move your stop. And as it approaches resistance, what I t usually tell people when it's approaching a resistance level in a chart, you should close it out 
before it starts pulling you back. Close it on the way up into strength. You'll always make more money, particularly with options. How many of you in options, you wait for the black candle to come into place and a great big part of your profit's gone? Take profits into strength of the move, okay? And you'll make more money. Don't get greedy. This requires you to identify good quality patterns and wait for the trade. You don't have to predict anything. You're moving with the direction of the market. You don't have to do anything fancy. You don't have to do any intraday analysis. Unless you're trading an intraday chart, then of course you're going to do an intraday analysis. But the same thing is true. I mean, if I go into the diamonds chart and go to a 15 minute chart, you're going to find that the patterns are the same. Okay, doesn't matter what time frame it is that you trade, if it's a four hour, doesn't matter if it's a weekly, they're the same. The only difference is the time you have to wait for the trade to set up. Be picky about the entries. We have to, one of the things that I have to work really hard with when I'm working with people in coaching is to get them past this over trading. They feel like every day when the market opens, I got to find they're in a rush to put money at risk. They're not asking, is this trade really worthy of my money? They're in a rush to put money at risk because they think activity equals results. Activity does not equal results. Following a trading plan and discipline equals results. Okay? Taking emotional trades, chasing trades, predicting doesn't lead to results. Don't we all have enough? Don't we all have enough experience in trading right now to know that that's true? That being super active, chasing, just rushing all the time, is that improving your trading? Are you making more money doing that? Is it getting any better? If you can answer that question yes, then don't listen to a thing I say. But if you're answering that question, say, wait a minute, he's right. That's I'm not making any money. I'm trying really hard. I'm working really hard, but I'm not making any money. then you might want to pay attention to what I'm talking about here because you can see all of these charts in here, this short list in, in charts in here, I don't need more than that right now. I don't have to be in anything else. It's different for everyone, Yadish, and, and coaching. Um, yeah, you can go to that link there um, and read about it because um, it tells you a lot just reading about it. Um, and it, it's different for everybody. I don't know, you know, first step we got to do is we got to spend about an hour me trying to figure out what you're looking for, what your trading is all about. I don't, I mean, I don't know who you are and I don't know what your trainings about. I don't know what your experience is. We have to start from there. Okay. And honestly, guys, everyone has to start from there. It's, it's how I got to this trading guys is one because when I went back and started reviewing my old trades and doing things I, I found out really quickly all of this predicting and rushing and chasing and all of these different things wasn't making me money it was making me frustrated as a matter of fact it was making me broke 
and I had to stop that activity. I had to buckle down into a system that had better odds. And that's why I like these trades, guys, is because the odds are better. I mean, show of hands, how many of you want to have trades that have a better odds than average? Type a Y. I mean, that's a no-brainer, right? We want to have trades that have better odds of winning. So what are you doing to get there? By going faster and doing the things that you've always done before? You're going to have more trades, but the results will be the same. What are you doing to fix those problems to change the end result? Okay. And, you know, the thing is, guys, you could have a pattern. You could have patterns that you like great. And you identify them real easily. Build a system around that. But stop the chasing, the rushing, the predicting, the gambling. Stop it. Because until you do, your results aren't going to change. My win-loss ratio is high, and it's not by accident. It's because I did the work to identify what gave me better odds than not. And anything that didn't give me higher than expected odds was just no longer of interest to me. I don't care if a stock jumps up and put a great big candle in that goes up 20%. I don't care. It's not my trade. I don't even want to look at it. I'm not going to trade it anyway. Why, why waste my time? I don't care. I don't care if the stock's not in a trend. I don't care. I don't care how much you like it. I don't care how much you're in love with that ticker sell. I don't care. There's nothing there. I'm not wasting my time with it. I'm not going to trade it. Okay, I don't care if it's going to, well, I do. If it's going to have earnings tomorrow, I really don't want to have anything to do with it. Because an earnings event, it's a coin flip. There's no way you can prove that you can have better odds on an unknown event coin flip. You got to stop doing it. Okay. The three and the eight, I really don't care about the three and the eight, Dylan. Okay. I, I really don't care. It was a way for me to teach this strategy. It was a way for me to show CPNG. If I go to the three, eight chart, that the three is staying above the eight. Think about this for a second. No, it's not special. I, you could use a 4 and a 10. You could use it. I don't care what you use. The only purpose is there to help you see that this is holding momentum. Okay, the 3 is shorter term than the 8. Does it make sense to you guys if the 3 falls below the 8, we're losing momentum? I don't want that trade. I only want trades that have the momentum in the direction I want them to have. So if this stays within its trend, three remains above the eight, the momentum gives me that opportunity for that to move on higher. Okay. It's more about price action. Now, Dylan, it's, it's a way of seeing price action. You see, here's the thing about any indicator, and this is one of those truths that no one's going to like. Okay, If you're really into indicators and you have all kinds of indicators, here's the truth, and you're going to hate it. And that is there's never been an indicator that ever paid you anything. We spend tons of time studying indicators, and they don't pay anything. What pays us is price action, and the truth is I use this chart. Most of the time, I teach the three eight trap so people can see the pattern coming. Okay, but it has nothing to do with the three and the eight. But 
the pattern is developing and we're waiting for the trade. Okay. Thanks for the question. Yeah, um, I'm the naked trader. Um, um, I talk about this in naked charts. This is my favorite chart. Just drawing lines. I don't need anything else. Okay, I seriously don't, and neither do you, because we only get paid when price moves. Not when an indicator moves. Not when an indicator crosses. That doesn't pay anything. It only pays us when price moves. So identify the pattern and then wait for it to occur. Okay? Once again, I want to repeat this one more time, and it's not because I'm special. Guys, I'm an old carpenter. Okay, with a bad back, there is nothing special about me. Okay? The only thing that I can say as a superpower is that I work really hard to develop, to develop a trading plan, and I follow it. That's it. I've got the discipline to follow it. And I was willing to change. I removed that ego part of this that I was a super. Tra I, I know, you know, I, I have forgot. I can easily give everyone in here an hour-long class on every indicator that is contained in TC2000. I can also tell you this: it won't make you any money. You want to make money, study price action. Price moves, we make money. So, I don't care what indicators you love. Fine, if you can, if you like them, if it helps you see the price pattern, no problem. Don't use them as the reason for a trade. Price is the reason for the trade. The position that price is in the trend is important to the trade. Where is support? Where is resistance? That is important to the trade. It doesn't matter what stochastic says, it doesn't matter what RSI says, it doesn't matter any of none of that matters. Is price going to move? If you find that you love those, I used to I used to fight people. Don't tell me that MACD doesn't make a difference. I'll show you. I'll tell you what, guys. After years, I can tell you without a fact, MACD never made me any money. Price made me money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, she uses the word special all the time, but it's in a more derogatory term, you know, tone. Gee, you're really special, you know that? <laughs> with the eye roll <laughs> okay so think carefully about this if you want to change it um, again my situation is nothing special I just started following rules and guidelines. I know what is a trade and what's not a trade, and I don't trade besides that. I don't chase trades. I don't care if I don't make a trade today, tomorrow, or even the next day. It makes no difference to me. If there's no trade that sets up right, I don't care. I only need a few winning trades to get rich. Okay. My win-loss ratio is high because I'm disciplined, not because there's anything special. Certainly nothing special with the 3 a trap. It's just a method of seeing the patterns. Okay. So guys, I hope you got something out of this tonight. And honestly, if you want more of this kind of stuff, I do a education every day. Um, as a member of Right Way Options, you guys can ask me any question you want. We can decipher, we can dissect a chart, 
We can look for entries. I can help you lay out different strategies to um, exploit that chart price action. We do that every day and there's a dedicated section two hours every day. So, I mean, think about it. Ten hours a week. Um, there's no, uh, um, there's no sexy in it. It's just real work of trading. Okay, keep it simple. Yeah, that's right, Terry. Keep it simple. So, love to see you guys. Take a look, get a trial, see if it's right for you. Remember, it's not about the trades. It's about the education. The trades are part of the education. Okay. Any other questions I can answer real quick before we go and I play Simple Man again? If not, thanks for listening to me. Thanks for, for listening to me preach on and Hopefully this honestly meant something to you because every once in a while that light bulb turns on for somebody and they go, oh, I get it now. And they start going down a different path and it changes their life. Okay. And yeah, seriously, I mean, you, you can't take a family of four to McDonald's for that price. <laughs> Skip the pizza this weekend and you've got her made. You can spend a month and see whether or not it's right for you. All right. Centauri, you're welcome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Gary, Ron. You guys have a wonderful evening. Get some rest. I'll see you all right back here bright and early tomorrow morning with the Morning Market Prep. Wish you all the best. And I seriously wish you all the best. And I hope that you get off of this this hamster wheel and start getting into a trading that's sustainable and makes you feel comfortable without all the anxiety. I really do wish that for everyone, whether it's what I do or you find another way to do that. I truly, truly wish that for everyone because it will change your life. Y'all take care. Be safe. See y'all tomorrow morning in RWO. Wish you all the best.